the more the world changes, the more some things stay the same. 65 years ago, the United States Congress passed the Federal Aid Highway Act, authorizing the construction of 41,000 miles of interstate highways. Decades and billions of dollars in infrastructure investment later, engineers and government officials continue to struggle to fix the congestion and traffic death epidemics. Calling these a problem is an understatement. Research by the analytics firm Enrix puts the cost of traffic congestion at a whopping $88 billion per year. That is the equivalent to losing the entire economy of Puerto Rico every single year as the result of traffic. Despite billions of dollars in upgrades and numerous commitments to a Vision Zero policy, traffic deaths and congestion continue to remain stubbornly high. The problem does not stem from a lack of effort to fix the problem, but rather a failure to recognize the root of the problem. Unraveling the traffic death and congestion puzzles will require taking a closer look at the nature of both and understanding the subtle relationships that ties the two together. Hello everyone, my name is Life and I am bringing to you an analysis of the relationship between congestion and traffic deaths. By comparing the traffic deaths versus the hours lost in congestion, some key ideas start to be revealed. Here we have plotted the 2019 congestion levels and deaths per 100,000 people from 18 cities from around the world. What are our immediate takeaways? The positive relationship between traffic deaths and the average hours lost in congestion is immediately apparent. The R value, or the measurement used for correlation, is approximately 0.48, implying a moderately strong relationship. Now the R squared value is 0.23, meaning that 23% of the variation of average hours lost in congestion can be explained by the model. Now that might not sound like much, but when you realize that there are dozens of unique factors influencing traffic, it starts to become very significant. With this relationship established, it is less surprising to observe that the cities with the least amount of traffic deaths, Oslo and Helsinki, also have the least congestion, whereas Philadelphia and Los Angeles suffer from the highest of both. While this pattern might surprise some of you, it is not groundbreaking news for policymakers. Observing deaths rise alongside the congestion has persuaded many traffic engineers, city leaders, and parts of the public to try and keep average speeds high via road expansions. And when time and energy is spent widening the roads instead of providing alternative solutions such as bus lanes or bike routes, we begin to see issues with safety start to arise. The key safety problem that we are faced with is a concept that traffic engineers refer to as conflict points. Well, first off, what is a conflict point? A conflict point is a location in or on the approach to an intersection or within a lane where vehicle paths merge, diverge, or cross. Let's consider a two-lane road as a simple example. There are a total of six conflict points. These are being hit from behind for both vehicles, hitting someone else from behind for both vehicles, and colliding during a left turn into a driveway for both vehicles. So what happens if the same road is expanded to four lanes? Well, the number of conflict points jumps to 14 and continues to rise as more travel lanes are added. The same problem exists at an intersection. A regular four-way intersection with one entrance and one departing lane in either direction has a total of 32 conflict points. Now conflict points are calculated by plotting the overlapping possible paths of travel at the intersection. So as the number of lanes entering and exiting increases, so do the number of conflict points. So why do conflict points matter? Research suggests that conflict points can be a useful surrogate for predicting accidents. It does not seem that cutting congestion via expansion is possible, and expansion makes roads fundamentally more dangerous. This also does not take into account evidence that shows drivers behave more recklessly on wider roads and are at greater risk to pedestrians and cyclists. The final nail in the coffin comes from examining the worst performers of the 18 cities in the model, Philadelphia and Los Angeles. What is a common theme in these cities? Very large highways, roads, and intersections that are a direct result from a legacy of trying to improve safety by cutting congestion.
So let's try a new approach that we are going to call beating congestion by boosting safety. Because improving safety by reducing congestion has failed to work, we must consider an overlooked explanation that serves as a mechanism for correlation between traffic deaths and congestion. Perhaps making roads safer is what cuts congestion. Now this might sound strange at first, but let's consider a typical road project as a simple example. As we established earlier, narrower roads have fewer conflict points and tend to be much safer. But how does this mean less congestion? So let's address the scenario on the screen. Let's assume that the original road width was 48 feet wide with four 12 foot travel lanes. Now we decide to make a change and go to three 10 foot wide travel lanes and use the extra 18 feet that was previously dedicated to cars to put in something like a 12 foot wide two way cycle path with a green barrier, add in a new tram line, create a bus only lane, expand the sidewalks, or some combination of these options. This mindset of using alternative forms of transportation to reduce congestion is critical to getting road users to switch to other transportation modes. More space and user protection is fundamental to creating an environment that significantly boosts the use of active transportation, and dedicating space for mass transit allows it to actually become a competitive option for commuters. Less road trips by cars goes a very long way in the reduction of congestion in cities. Time loss from congestion increases exponentially as more cars are added to a road system. However, it is also known that there is an exponential reduction in congestion and time loss as cars are removed from the road system. So, to provide more evidence, let's revisit the top two performing cities of the 18 that we have plotted, Oslo and Helsinki. If this hypothesis is correct, there should be much smaller road facilities with plenty of space for other forms of transportation. Based on our analysis, it does appear that the road facilities in Oslo and Helsinki are considerably smaller than their counterparts in Philadelphia and Los Angeles. It is also clear that space has been allocated to promote the safe and efficient use of alternatives, whether that is walking, cycling, or taking mass transit. The safest roads lose the least amount of time from congestion, and the most dangerous roads lose the most. Although it might seem tempting to improve the situation by cutting down on congestion, aka widening roads, the fundamentals of road geometry and real-world examples reveals that it is a flawed strategy and ultimately fails. Instead, we must embrace what seems to be counterintuitive. Only by improving the safety of the road system by downsizing facilities can other modes of transportation be made comfortable and efficient enough which can in turn reduce the amount of congestion. Ultimately, solutions are only as good as the understanding of the original problem. The congestion and traffic death epidemic has persevered for more than a century, largely due to a lack of understanding among policymakers of the subtle relationship between traffic deaths and congestion. With a better understanding of the problem and the necessary political will, the days of being stuck in traffic and listening to the report on the latest road fatalities may be numbered at last. If you like what we do, please like, comment, and subscribe. We also have a Patreon that allows us to continue with the creation of new content. You can also find us on Instagram and other social media sites. All of the links are provided in the description below.